Now that we have seen that there is no merit in doing factor rotation, let's see the opposite, which is instead of doing uh, timing of factors, we will do equal allocation among all the five factors and see if this equal allocation strategy works better than factor timing. And also let's see if the equal allocation among factors works better than the Nifty 200 index or not. Now the calculation of equivated NAV is simple. To do that first, we'll get all the five factors uh, NAV normalized to 100 starting 31st July 2005. And then we'll calculate the monthly returns of all these five factors. The equated strategy or NAV is nothing but the average of all the five factors NAV for that month. So this way we're going to get the equated NAV uh, as simple as that. Now let's uh, take a step ahead and calculate the three year, five year and seven year rolling returns so that we are not doing point to point comparison, but let's calculate the rolling returns of three, five and seven years. And also I'll calculate the drawdown and volatility. And once I do that, I'm going to show the comparison against the uh, factors individually and also with respect to Nifty 200 and also with the factor, ro uh, factor rotation strategy. So this is the summary table. As you can see, the equated uh, factor, which is in the row 11, is definitely looks better than the Nifty 200 on three year, five year and seven year rolling periods. And if you see uh, the max stored on our volatility, it is similar or in fact, slightly better than uh, holding the Nifty 200 index. So that's the first uh, point that we can uh, clearly see. Second thing is that uh, just like the factor rotation of top two, it is not as good as either alpha or momentum across the three time periods. That's the second point. Now, third point is let's compare between equivate and factor rotation. Now, to do the comparison, we need to keep one thing in mind that factor rota rotation, we cannot take these returns at face value because it involves total number of uh, 60 transactions across this 18 year period. So we'll have to subtract those returns from this. Only then we'll be able to compare apple to apple. Till then it is not uh, likewise comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add multiple uh, scenarios. Let's assume that uh, we subtract 1% of returns across uh, due to transaction charges, STT or capital gains. Uh, let's say we remove 1% or let's also take another case where we remove 2%. And in these two cases, 1% uh, removal and 2% removal, then we're going to compare whether this, uh, the factor rotation strategy still is better than the equate or not. So I have the three year rolling returns of equated strategy and the factor rotation strategy here, same with uh, five year and seven year rolling returns. Now to see if these two return distributions are different or not, I'm going to use a paired wise T test. It's a statistical test to determine whether these two return distributions are equal or not. If someone who's interested uh, about these uh, statistical tests, I'll put a link in the YouTube description. You can go ahead and read about them. Now, the reason why we are deploying this statistical test is because when we look at the data prima facie of the return distribution, we cannot judge which one is better. Only when we do a, a paid by state test, we'll be able to validate or uh, negate the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis here being that both the means are the same. There is no difference between them. So how I'm going to do, I'll uh, take the difference between the rolling returns, that is uh, the factor rotation strategy and equated strategy. I'm going to get the difference for all these uh, periods rolling returns. And then I'm going to uh, plot this. So let's plot a histogram. So this is how the histogram looks like. Now, if more number of data points are pointing towards the uh, negative values, it means that there is a significant difference between uh, these two strategies. And uh, since we are subtracting uh, equated minus strategy, it means that equate is underperforming. So that's how we can visually tell. But instead of visually seeing it, let's do a, a paired by state test and see for three year, five year and seven year rolling returns. So these are the results uh, that are going to look like. 
uh, when we do when we run a uh, paired wise t test for three year five year and seven year also i have done this uh, test when the returns are taken at face value that is we are assuming that these returns are the same as it is without any capital gains or transaction fee and when we subtract 1% of returns as capital gain and transaction i'm just calling it as 1% deduction as 1% fee and if it deduct 2% across the whole uh, rolling returns then what are the results going to look like the another important uh, parameter that you need to look at is the p value which basically if it is less than 0 0.05 it means it is statistically significant and the difference is going to tell whether it is outperforming or underperforming and the outperformer is mentioned here now if you see at face value across all the time periods 3 5 and 7 the strategy which is nothing but the factor rotation is performing better so if you simply look at the uh, returns without any deductions then the factor rotation strategy is good but if you have to consider 1% deduction across because of the uh, capital gains and uh, transactions then in the three year rolling period neither of them are better so we are better off either investing in equal weighted factor or uh, the factor rotation if if both of them are the same then what's the point of uh, taking extra headache of uh, doing a factor rotation strategy investing uh, again moving in moving out rather we are simply better to hold equated strategy if you took uh, a longer period of five years still the same there is no difference between equated or factor rotation but if we take a seven year uh, rolling period then equated becomes better now if you take two percent deduction across uh, the uh, returns of factor rotation strategy then in all these three cases equated performs better so what we see is that the factor rotation strategy is not better than the equated strategy if you take into consideration the capital gains and transaction charges on all uh, rolling periods 3, 5 and 7. And now let's also compare whether the equated strategy is better than the Nifty 200 index or not. So we see that across 3, 5 and 7 year periods the P value is much less than 0 0.05. It is somewhere 10 to the power of minus 15, 10 to the power of minus 19, minus 34. So it statistically uh, is significant across uh, all the time periods and it is uh, with 99% confidence that these uh, returns distribution is better than the Nifty 200. So two things have, we have established that the equal weightage allocation of factors is definitely better than the index and also we have established that the equal weightage holding of factors is also better than doing factor timing or factor rotation across time periods. So I'd like to end this video by showing the assumptions that I have taken to do this backtest. The first one, I have taken the factor indices data from NSE and not the actual tradable instruments data. The reason being that there are no tradable instruments available since 2005 to run this backtest. So hence I had relied upon indices. Now, when I rely upon indices, obviously the uh, main issue would be that uh, there will be a tracking error whenever uh, someone launches an ETF or a mutual fund based on an index. The exact matching of the index values uh, is not possible. So any ETF or mutual fund will have some tracking error. Now that tracking error can uh, cause some differences in the backtested results. So that's the first assumption that we need to bear in mind. The second thing is that when we take the index data, we always get closing prices at the end of the day. So today's closing price is assumed to be tomorrow's opening price. Now this might not be the case uh, every time. There can be uh, gap ups or gap downs and hence uh, the results, uh, especially the backtested results when done on actual tradable instruments might vary. Secondly, the bid ask spread uh, when we do uh, backtesting on actual instruments might be different. And that also will cause some differences in the uh, results when we do uh, backtest on uh, actual tradable instruments. So these are the three major assumptions. And uh, with this, I'd like to end this video. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.